Alright, it is October 23rd, 2023, it's approximately noon time. I got like a 30 minute drive, it's just me and my beard of Zeus, and I, I can't even go on X lately, it's, um, it's just just war porn absolute war porn it's just like horrific talks and photos and videos and I guess there's like a sickness sometimes where you know like when it's when it's somebody's birthday I don't get a bunch of text messages saying did you did you hear it's so-and-so's birthday today oh okay or so-and-so graduated, or so-and-so made this great accomplishment. But as soon as somebody dies or gets sick or injured, you're like, did you hear so-and-so's injured or so-and-so's dead? They have no more birthdays. It's, it's like, people want to be the first one to, to like show you a video online nowadays of a, you know, a, a child all bloody covered in ashes from a war. And it's like, uh, <laughs> whatever that, whatever that, that meme is. Why, why would you do this to me? And then you can't unsee it. It goes onto your mental hard drive, and you have to meditate and wash and put good, good, colorful thoughts in your head afterwards. Luckily, I'm in New England. If you can see in my in the rear here, we got the leaves changing. It's gorgeous. I expect all the communists to be coming up here to the free state that they hate so much. But without government, who would change the colors of the leaves on the trees? So, what I wanted to talk about is misinformation and the campaign of misinformation and the idea of knowledge versus wisdom and why the push for misinformation is so big meaning the, the war of information is useless if you're fighting the war of information, I get it. It's a pragmatic battle, like any war, where you are trying to stick your finger in the in the dike so the water doesn't come out, and not the good type of dike, the uh, the water dike, the dam, so that you know all the badness that's being held back, that's being created by evil, doesn't wash the good away. But in the scheme of things, what you really need, or what I suggest that you use as your compass throughout life, you can pick your own choices, you make your own choices, pick your own path. But philosophy and wisdom is a much easier guiding light, lighthouse to the darkness of the world as you travel compared to information and knowledge and stuff and what do I mean by this so when you look at an individual and I'm going to pick an individual that not necessarily at random but I don't have this this has nothing to do with the current current war situation or whatever I'm going to pick an, uh, an individual like Sam Harris, for example, or even Jordan Peterson. The reason that these two individuals were, are allowed in Ben Shapiro, we'll pick Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, um, and we'll put them, we'll, we'll put that, these three people up to the test. Actually, should we pick another lefty? We'll pick um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. So 
these four individuals, I would say we can agree that they are above average intelligence. Meaning that they have uh, a preconceived, a, a predetermined genetical component to their ability to uh, look at data, somewhat understand that data, and then remember that data and then extrapolate that data into other aspects. Which seems like a gift, right? Because you're remembering and using data. However, if you are remembering and using incorrect data, then this gift is becomes useless so if all the information and knowledge that you have that you're building your houses on with this foundation is you know if you if one plus one equals two but all those people think that one plus one equals three then the information that they can have extrapolate recall and turn into soliloquies and turn into talks and discussions and plans for life become useless because although they are knowledgeable they have a lot of knowledge and they have good memories where they can remember that knowledge and they can even uh, conceptualize the knowledge that they have and create analogies and tell different stories and use it to structure other parts of their life if the knowledge that they have and the information they have is incorrect they're going to formulate incorrect stories and paths so for example uh, let's do weapons of mass destruction so for those who are not old enough to know or those who uh, conveniently forgot there was a time back when Bush was in office that all the alphabet people the FBI and the CIA and everything all agreed at once and went to George W. Bush and said that either Iraq or Iran I forget which one I apologize to the, to the people of these countries but you're all individuals to me I don't see as a country I see as an individual. Uh, I believe it was Iraq. And they said, uh-oh. Well, we can't say nukes. But we can say, wait for this beautiful words of wizardry that we have crafted a spell of charm behind to cast into the ears of all the poets so that they were Manchurian candidate into what we need to then do. Weapons of mass destruction, destruction, destruction. So now if you cast this spell and you start the story, the information here, and you're worried, you know, you start saying, okay, well, this is a country and, and the Persians, uh, known for intelligence, etiquette, uh, high IQs and stuff. Not all of the Middle East is like that and not all of uh, the Middle East is Persian. But, so you have to get rid of them and get rid of that term and, and, and then start explaining, and especially you can go on and look at the 1970s and look at photos of the Middle East then and now and it's like it's absolutely been destroyed but anyways I digress so you go and you tell a story that there's these low IQ people that have a religion that wants to destroy everybody and now they have weapons of mass destruction and you get everybody on board and you can go and you can create create a war 
and start printing some money. Print us some money, baby. Hand it out to all the companies up top. And you know, you got people on the, the in the military, and the people that are supplying the military, and the boards are going back and forth. And they're printing some money, and everybody's getting getting happy, and people are getting reelected because it's wartime. But when you go and you look back at the people here, the people at the time, if they're intelligent, not wise, but intelligent, don't confuse the two. Wisdom and intelligence are separate categories. If they're they're more than average intelligence then they go and they get knowledge but the only knowledge that they can gather is that there's this group of low IQ people that are hell-bent in, in dogmatic on a religion with these weapons of mass destruction and then they look and they have these paperwork and they have these multiple people that they consider credible credible individuals giving them this data and this information they now move forward into a direction of war because it's the logical conclusion and solution to the information that they have in a pragmatical setup and situation where the world currently has governments, there's currently war, there's currently we're on the side of good as part of the story that they're knowledgeable about, that they have intel on. Those are the bad guys, they want to destroy us, we have this information. And you put the pieces together of the puzzle pieces that you have. You have this puzzle, and you're only giving these very specific pieces. They're not put together, the box is all open and askew. And in their mind, they take these pieces and they put them together and they assemble a picture. And then they say, okay, here's what it looks like. Here's how we can assemble this picture so that the good things happen for everybody. The intent is good things for everybody. Let's just say, for sake of this argument. The problem with intellect and knowledge is that if any one of those pieces is incorrect or invalid, there's no way to, to vet the, the information completely. You can use your gut, and you can use, um, you know, past history, and you can use all sorts of things, but you'll never actually know if the person's lying to you. If they, if they can look you right in the eyes and not tell the truth, uh, even if you have video and circumstantial evidence and all this stuff, you, you can't figure out the truth within your, your data stuff, okay? so. So you just have this data and you have to trust the people that are giving to you and you're working forward to that. Can you see how there, that, uh, that people that have a slightly higher than average IQ with a average or low wisdom scale could make bad decisions when making pragmatical knowledge and in intel or intellectual choices void of moral principles ethics so where does this leave us it leaves us in a situation where and I would have to go back and check but I believe those four people that I mentioned that are on four corners and separate parts of uh, platforms were in agreement at the time that the answer from the puzzle pieces that they had was that war that well it was technically a conflict because it was never vetted it was never um, put to a vote we don't actually go to war we go to conflict somehow people are just like war go no, there's no vote. Yeah, we know. Go conflict, spend billions of dollars, print billions of dollars because I said so. Don't worry, it's a democracy. It's not even a republic either. Go fuck yourself. It's an oligarchy, read by the shadow people, but I digress. So what are the other options? Well, wisdom. Have you ever seen a cleric in a 
in a role action role playing game uh, and I'm not talking about the Pope or rabbis I'm talking about you know real salt of the earth barefoot robes peace trying to stop and negotiate if if you look at a conflict through the eyes of wisdom through the eyes of wisdom and we get some principles we would start way down at first principle and one of the first principles that I want to talk about would be self ownership and I'm gonna speed through this so I'll have to make some other videos so hold on tight because we're about to go zero to a thousand like this through the whole through this whole thought process so if you like this stuff make sure you subscribe ask some questions and I'll make some more videos and I'll scroll down some of these concepts but we're about to speed through so bam an individual owns themselves and they owned everything that they produce and the actions of that individual so there's no such thing as governments Governments do not exist, countries do not exist. These are collectives. So there's not an actual war in the Middle East right now. There is individuals with guns committing murders and mass murders in the name of a dogma. When you look at it like this, can you imagine if you talk to your friend and said, what did you do yesterday? And you said, I went out and I killed 20 people over that imaginary line. I murdered them. Why? Well, because this other guy in a suit told me to go murder those people. Why? Well, I heard that they want to take my land over. Have they come to your land to take it over? No, but I heard that they're going to. So the principle is... The individual owns themselves and then they could homestead or take care of the property in their next vicinity to the point in which they can care for it and protect that by self-defense and not initiating the use of force. Because you own your own uh, body or whatever, you know, the uses of it, but then other people do too. So you got to be empathetic to that. So... You would then negotiate shared communal land and negotiate societal which land was private that you owned. And that would be spontaneous, uh, organic, and voluntary interactions between one another. So then you say, well, what if somebody doesn't agree to these voluntary interactions? What happens then? And it's like, well, then you could call in a third part person to help you negotiate between the two. And why I'm speaking about wisdom right now is we know, and this is whether you practice MMT, monetary, modern monetary theory, or if you practice Austrian economics or free market economics, or whatever it may be, that protection and prevention is always cheaper than reciprocity or cure. Meaning to fight your neighbor over the land and murder one another, <laughs> long term is gonna cause more problems and cause more re and, and cost more resources than to negotiate with them and come to uh, you know an, an understanding in between. S same thing with war. Negotiating and trading for resources in those lands would be a lot cheaper than going to war. And the evidence for the United States, for instance, is we've been at war pretty much the whole 200 plus years that we've been in existence or whatever now. Um, and what if it's, it's now 33, 34 trillion dollars in debt. So they've spent They've spent and created and stolen via inflation $34 trillion worth of future resources from people in the future, from the serfs, spread it out, suck that those out of the out of the earth, use them ahead of time, inefficiently, mostly for war. There's a lot of other subsidies and stuff that go on. Um, but a large portion of that is for war. 
and creating pollution and killing people and all that stuff. And where has it really gotten anybody? It hasn't made anything more peaceful. It hasn't made any more, any more, buddy, more prosperous. Now there is an argument to say, well, the elites and the people that own the military industrial complex and what have you are getting more prosperous. And it's like, well, are they? They own a bunch of fiat currency that has now been inflated to the point where there's 34 trillion of uh, in debt just printed that's owed back and there's more out into the environment. So they're getting paid in toilet paper. So if they're switching that toilet paper into gold and real estate, which some of them are, uh, BlackRock and those are, the reason they're turning that toilet paper into hard property is because you can always kick real estate. So they're going to start buying gold, silver, and houses because you can you can kick that. It's actually resources that have been put, you know what I mean? So anything you can kick, you can own, you know what I mean? So like cars, uh, property, land for the most part, when they're buying those houses, what they're really buying is the land that they're on and trying to scoop that up because they, they know that this paper is shit. Um, so having said all that, these are rules created by rulers. These are not laws woven into the fabric of society. Natural consequences are always working in the background. So while on the short term, these individuals look like they're getting rich and successful and they're being happy and all this and all this stuff. In the long run, they're destroying uh, their own t their own bloodline and future bloodlines because the natural consequences will come back within within the fabric of uh, within the fabric of things. Uh, I'm almost at my destination. I'm 22 minutes in. I'm about two minutes away from my destination. So I want you to do a little bit homework here or don't. I don't really give a fuck if you're what, what you want to do. It's your life. Do what you want to do. But I would suggest that when you see a war and you have two sides fighting, let's go with Israel versus Palestine right now and you're trying to make a decision, your mind has been programmed and propagandized to look at those individuals as collectives. That it's two countries. It's, it's Israel versus Palestine. And they went to war with one another. But that's not what happened. There's millions of people in each place. And some people at the top convinced some other people to join them in evil acts of murder and they took money and they made weapons with that money most of it stolen through like I said printed money and inflation and what then what those evil people did is they went out and they said we're going to murder these people now there is an argument to be said that the people that that are in the country need to stand up because they're being pacifists and they need to go stop these evil people but then in, in, in a defense mechanism, so if you're living within a border of an area that other people around that area are calling Israel or calling Palestine, and there's evil people that are making military and joining armies and fighting one another, then it's not immoral to not act and defend. So you, you're... You can't have you like uh, you know so, because everybody who's not defending then is immoral. So it's only it's it, the initiation of the use of force is immoral. On the other end, you could defend without being without being immoral, but you could also be pacifistic and not do anything and still remain moral. But remember that this is not a collective. Everybody in Israel did not wake up, want war, make, print money, get guns, and go kill everybody in Palestine who also woke up. This individual is living in this particular area of a desert. Other people claim that this line around it is them, and they were just living there. It's no different than when you were born in the United States or Canada or Germany or the UK, or whatever. You were born there. You have an area. And when you were born into it, it's a bunch of people like this line is this and this line is this. 
They're imaginary lines, you're individuals interacting with one another. And the sooner you realize, it's like that scene in the Matrix that just realized there is no spoon and, he's, and the little monk kid is waving it at Neo. There is no government. These are individuals with weapons making evil choices to murder one another. Now, pragmatically, you can just, you can then say, okay, well, I'm going to choose which side was the aggressor and which side was the defender. And at that point, the defender is in their right to, um, you know, they're not initiating force. They're defending themselves against murder. And the other side is the murderer because they're on the offense. That's when you get back into the information aspect of it where um, there's going to be a lot of misinformation and it's not going to be uh, black and white at that point. It's not like once one person that calls themselves Israeli shoots and kills one person that's a Pakistanian, Palestinian, that means that everybody from the cause of South Palestinian can kill any Israeli. Because of that, and then you're just attacking an individual. And vice versa, if one Palestinian kills one Israeli person, it doesn't say, okay, now all, we have the right to defend and kill all these people. It's an individual doing an individual act. Now, when a country bombs an individual, one individual, usually an elite or a pack of elites, is convincing a third party that's a non-elite to like hit a button and drop a huge weapon onto individuals and kill multiple people. It's that person that kills, but that pushes the button that murdered all those people. So as it stands, we collectivize these things that make it um, easier on the individuals that are involved and to comprehend the evilness when they compartmentalize people as the others. But the person that hits the button for those bombs and kills those multiple people is a mass murderer. Killing and slaughtering multiple people, more than school shooters, probably more than gang members in Chicago. But that one person's action is being blamed on the whole country as a collective. So remember, these are individuals making individual choices of evil. If everybody's pressuring somebody to push that button, they say, no, I'm not going to push that button. And then everybody on the other side said, no, I'm not going to pull that trigger. There would be another consequence, but, you know, it, it would at least be a start. <laughs> you know what I mean? We have Remember, it's individuals. It's not a robot. It's not a country. It's not a collective all holding a collective hand, pulling a tr pulling a, a lever. It's individuals making all these choices. And once you start seeing it like that, you can start seeing it with wisdom and philo philo um, philosophy in a philosophical manner rather than try to pinpoint who's evil and who's not. There's bad people on both sides and there's good people on both sides. And... It's while you can look at past history and particular areas statistically on the aggregate and make personal choices like I need to move from this area or I need to speak out against this area or I need to write about this area. Or I need to use my words or whatever to stay safe. You also have to look at the individual back and forth. So you need to meet, switch your mind from statistics and looking at aggregates to take your own safety and your family's safety in the matter and then warn others about the the dangers of those groups in those areas you also have to be able to when you meet an individual that has that particular label look at them as an in individual and see if they've made good or bad choices and their bad choice could be as much as continuing to call themselves by that collective because if you continue to call yourself by a collective, then you're saying that you condone and you're part of the actions of that collective. Um, whereas if you can call yourself an individual, you're separating yourselves from the actions of that. And then, last but not least, watch out for the shapeshifters. People that 
are simultaneously victims, why they're simultaneously oppressors, why they're simultaneously the top, why they're simultaneously to the bottom, why they're simultaneously one demographic and then they switch to another demographic and then they're atheists and then they're part of a different religion and they shapeshift back and forth so that you can't get a hold of them. They're using this, they're diving in and out of different collectives based on their needs. As soon as you see anybody attach themselves to a collective, you should be, be weary. Um, but if they jump collectives, uh, but almost seems seamlessly, uh, this is where the trope of the, in the past of people that are shapeshifters comes from. So, uh, you, you know, you're up against a, a devilish mind at that point where, where they're not arguing with you in good faith. They're trying to weave words in order to cast a, a charm spell or confusion spell on you. And you just have to hold stance still with your, with your principles and realize that evil is what evil does. And that's a, um, this honest, uh, situation that they're, they're involving in. And you should walk away from that, um, and be able to see that. Like I said, if you're principled and you're looking at an individual and they keep adding labels to themselves, they've called themselves a collective. So any collective they add themselves to, they get all the evils of that collective. Uh, they, they get the positives, I guess, but they didn't really do the positives. Individuals did those positives, not the collective. So, all right, that's enough for today. I got to get to work. I got 30, that's 30 minutes. Take care.